before the Emperor of Mankind formed the Imperium. Millennia prior to the creation of the Thunder Warriors, let alone the Space Marines. Mankind was very close to the bottom of the galactic food chain, and in fact, lucky that Terra was not scoured of human life. There is a deep-seated, xenophobic streak that runs a galactic mile long throughout the hearts and minds of all Imperials, mundane citizen and transhuman alike. And likewise, humankind are utterly loathed by the majority of alien species within the galaxy. This hatred for humankind stems more so from the Imperium's willingness to persecute any Xenos simply for the act of drawing breath. For the Imperium of Man, there are as many ways of disposing of Xenos filth as there are Xenos species within the Milky Way. But why are mankind so scornful of any alien species, and how did this come to pass? To explore this in detail, we must turn back at the hands of time to around the year AD 25,000. Unbeknownst to the human race, who in the millennia prior to this had enjoyed momentous advancements in both technology and planetary acquisition, the fathomless depredations of the Aldari race would toss the galaxy into a tumult of warp storms and demonic incursions at a rate never before experienced within the material plane. As the youngest chaos god Slanesh, consciousness was beginning to gain stability within the maddening unreality that is the warp, the material plane would be plagued by ravaging warp storms. These would throw many starships off course in the least, utterly breaking them apart in the extreme, while simultaneously making a mockery of galactic empires by smothering entire planets and even systems in debilitating warp storms. As human and Xenos alike went about their daily toil, a rift in real space was torn open in the galactic northwest. Those not driven utterly insane, or as fortune would have it, whose planet was not in the path of wanton destruction, could only look on in shock and awe as an event that would shape the galaxy's future for millennia to come, unfurled before them. Humankind had dared to reach out into the great void, to carve an empire for itself, and the cruel gods of chaos had found their ability utterly wanting. For the next five millennia, much of humankind would suffer, either living in perpetual fear as their understanding of the world around them regressed, or cut off from all else, did whatever they needed to, to survive. In the history books, this era is now known as the Age of Strife, yet to those living within that time, it was simply the way things were. This oppressiveness lasted 5,000 years period of existence in itself the history books would find it impossible to keep track of accurately, let alone the existing government and rulers to maintain the status quo. Through warp influence or just simply a breakdown in ethics and government, some desperate populaces would even devolve into cannibalistic tribes, understanding only the rule of might and the need for self-preservation. While some would be ruled by the demon, Others would be kept in line by the iron fist of their own kind, launching sporadic raids on similar nations for sustenance, or attempting to siege the more civilised citizens on their planet, those who have managed to maintain their humanity in the face of insanity. We see instances such as this on the Primarch homeworlds of Baal Secundus or Chemos. Upon these worlds, countless generations of cultural regression not to mention lack of diversity and genetics for the purpose of reproduction, would render these erstwhile humans all but unrecognisable in comparison to their once noble ancestors. Other worlds, different in the nature of their tormentors, though still bleak and horrible to exist upon, powerful Xenos would seize the opportunity presented to them, enthralling hapless human civilizations or plunging them into system-spanning war before ruling the dystopian civilizations ruthlessly. One such example of this, again a Primarch world, was that of Barbaros. Within this era, humankind would be preyed upon by Xenos of savage nature, citizens being dragged into the night onto void craft of unfamiliar design to never be heard from again. Though many dangerous Xenos from this dark time still persist within the era Indomitus, there were back then many powerful alien species which were content to make mortals their playthings. Besides the debaucherous Eldari we mentioned earlier, 
Species such as the savage, warlike orcs were a menace even 15 millennia ago, and others such as the fearsome Rangdan or the wickedly vile Sloth were nightmares best not dwelt upon. During this oppressive time, survival on most worlds was a matter of one's own metal, paired with sheer luck, but what did life within this time look like for baseline humans? Given the lengthy millennia this oppressive time of tyrants would last for, for many a human culture, the name of their home planet, Terra itself, would pass into legend. For most, this existence was all they knew. The world ships originally a part of the terraforming process or colonisation fleet the first humans arrived upon would be built around over time, becoming the centre of townships, or in a lot of cases, cannibalised for raw materials, becoming martyr mothers to the sprawling metropolis within which many people now called home. For a lucky few, some governments would stay safe by way of their own ability, fortuitous positioning within the galaxy, or, in cases of such civilizations as the Interax, uniting Xenos races to form a more powerful, capable coalition. One capable of defending itself against the warp spawn and Xenos predation fleets of this dark age. There were even some civilizations which survived by bribing or paying the Xenos overlords which had come to rule their systems. At the tail end of the 30th millennium, the perpetual human known collectively as the Emperor of Mankind, though he did go by many other titles and names in past lives, would lead his united forces from Terra, the cradle of humanity, and begin to reunite the lost, far-flung human colonies which had survived so much. The Emperor was acutely aware of the malign influence Xenos culture could have upon the fledgling human empire, so young in its re-emergence into the stars. He knew that in the millennia that had passed since the golden years of the age of technology, humankind's spirit was dulled. Its collective psyche had resorted to the worship of gods, as well as the fear of the supernatural to explain the horrendous galaxy which now thrived around them. Vanished were the atheistic, studious peoples who were so determined to bend the galaxy to their own devices for the betterment of their species. Truly this was a galaxy in desperate need of unity. The ancient night worlds which had devolved into feudal planets and or city-states ruled by a noble knight pilot, king or aristocracy, would bend the knee to this new united Terran peoples. Ancient Mechanicus Forge worlds would follow the example set by Mars, vowing to follow the will of the Omnissiah, the identity with which they associated the Emperor. No longer would their god engines or Skatari legions need to foray into the unknown to search for scattered remnants of mankind or machine. They would join the main thrust of humanity outward from the Segmentum Solar, taking a lead role in the greatest developmental step humankind had dared to attempt for millennia. The Age of Strife had come to an end, after almost 6,000 years of suffering under the heel of scheming Xenos or supernatural forces whose nature could not be explained. Within this horrific epoch, humankind's ancient fear of the dark had been reignited in a people who prior to this had been well on their journey to taming the galaxy. Now, like savages emerging from dimly lit caves on a new dawn, they were optimistic of the future. But through uncountable generations of experience and cautionary legend, had learnt a valuable lesson in that Xenos of all creeds were not to be trusted, and were in fact anathema to the progress and unity that humanity now stood for at the forefront of the Emperor's sally from Terra. As a means of uniting so many fighting men and women with an overarching cause, not to mention the countless trillions who would be swept under the purview of the new Imperium, at the forefront of Terra's armies was the dogma of the Emperor's Imperial Truth. Used as the uniting ideology behind the Emperor's regime on Terra, it would now be propagated among his armies of millions and carried throughout the stars to every corner of the galaxy in his name. This belief system would further drive home to the average citizen the importance of not fraternising outside of one's own species, as well as doing one's part to strengthen the position of humankind's regime upon the galactic stage. 
The Great Crusade was not the first time war had been waged in the name of humankind's unity, mind you. With the imperial truth being proclaimed by those vast armoured cohorts which formed the Emperor's forces during Terra's unification. The Emperor's core dogma of science and secular progress had united the very cradle world humanity had first ventured throughout the stars from, and he would now utilise its anchor of reason based factual tenets to deliver security and safety to the lost, misled masses. Of course, there were some human societies which had, over the long millennia of darkness, found kindred spirits in Xenos species, who together would find common cause enough to trust and unite in an effort to make survival within the dark galaxy more likely for their peoples. When such human civilizations were found unwilling to abandon their alien allies to pledge sole allegiance to the Emperor's regime, both they and their Xenos partners would be put to the torch by the crusading Imperial fleets. The new Imperium would brook no weakness or dissent. So it was for those scattered remnants of humanity's galactic empire, they would find themselves being shepherded back to a united humanity, whose whole was infinitely stronger than its constituent parts. Being suddenly placed within the bottom of a galactic food chain, humankind was firmly in opposition to sharing the Milky Way galaxy with any sentient Xenos species. Lo betide any Xenos culture brave or foolhardy enough to believe the Imperium yet another fractured offshoot of long lost or forgotten human colonists. And so would all species within the galaxy learn to fear the Bolter and the Chain Blade. As humankind's expanse outwards from Terra vanquished every Xenos empire it encountered, even the most powerful of alien kind were felled by way of human strategic genius as well as Astartes' might. During this golden age of expansion and unification, the unimaginable would come to pass. As no doubt most of our learned listeners already are aware, fully half the Emperor of Mankind's Sons would become corrupted by the foul entities within the war, known as Khorne, Nurgle, Slanesh, and Sinch. Whilst the Emperor had been working upon his webway project, a mode of transit making use of the ancient webway, in the past, created by the ancients, the malign powers of chaos had been busy enacting schemes to overthrow the emperor of mankind, usurp his legions for their own, and eventually enslave not only the human race, but the entirety of the galaxy. The timing of this revolt was truly advantageous for the followers of the dark gods, for had the emperor been successful in rebuilding the webway tunnels which had fallen to ruin, adapting them for use by mankind, the Imperium of Man, and indeed the human race as a whole, would likely have been unassailable by any enemy existing within the material plane, such as turncoat legionnaires. Alas though, this was not the events which would unfold. Mankind's galactic domain was plunged into civil war, and trillions perished in the flames of horrors debased coup. Only through persistent sacrifice would mankind achieve a Peric victory. Ironically, contrary to the teachings of the Imperial Truth, an epidemic of faith had spread throughout the loyalist forces which perfectly countered the blasphemous practices of the chaos worshippers within the final days of the Siege of Terror. This was the greatest recorded civil war to ever plague humanity within over 30,000 years of recorded civilization. At the blooming of the 31st millennium, mankind had by now thoroughly experienced the threats which both the demon and the alien posed and hated them all vehemently for it. It had taken 6,000 years, but man had learnt invaluable lessons as to not only the threats present within the wider galaxy, but also their place within it. Given these horrific chain of events had taken part over such lengthy periods of time, these toxic, hate-filled beliefs had permeated human society thoroughly. Now ironically, as the Emperor, having almost given his life to halt Horus Rebellion and now sitting immobile and unresponsive on the Golden Throne, would begin to, more than ever, garner the status of Godhood throughout the masses of humanity, the worship of the Emperor as humanity's one and only deity had started prior to the outbreak of the heresy and through the basic human need to protect their psyche during the horrible events of that conflict. This belief system had rapidly spread from pilgrim to citizen and to hopeful defenders of humanity, 
even to the point where some Astartes believed. At the core of this newly founded faith in the Emperor was a supreme hatred for the Xenos, the mutant and the heretic. Through the predation and malign influence of these hateful creatures had humanity suffered unimaginably, though by the divine will of the Emperor were mankind determined to again forge their own ascendancy upon the galactic stage. Throughout the years, by the 32nd millennium, this imperial cult would become the official religion of mankind, in which worship was mandatory under pain of death, or worse. Formally, it would be known as the Adeptus Ministorum, or Ecclesiarchy. Do you think the xenocidal mindset of humankind is justified, given the stakes at risk within the era Indomitus, that is the hearts and souls of mankind's trillions of citizens? Please leave a comment with your thoughts on the content. What do you believe the biggest threat to the Imperium of Man is? I reply to all comments. Alternatively, check out our Discord. The link's in the description. I'd love for you to start a conversation about your thoughts on the law, or even with your hobby progress. If you haven't already, check out our videos on the Tyranids reaching Terra, or whether Games Workshop will kill off the Emperor. They're the best performing videos on the channel by a country mile, so they must be entertaining. If you'd like to support the channel, Please check out the link in the description to Gap Games who sell Warhammer for a 21% reduction in price. The channel receives a percentage of purchases made through that link, so it's an awesome way to allow us to invest more in recording and editing equipment for the channel. Besides that, a like, share, comment and subscribe does wonders to share the video and help it to gain traction with the algorithm. Thanks for your time, take it easy, have a good one.